All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Johnny Jungle Guts. I'm out here in my new apartment. Uh, so it's looking a little sparse, a little stark, a little house stark. Uh, the landlord cut off the water, so I'm giving you a struggles of the young people effect right now. But I'm going to run through these first four bootleg episodes of Game of Thrones that we all watched last night. First thing I see, straight out the gate, Cersei Lannister not being nice as usual. Let me tell you something. Lena Headey, she has to be the best actress at playing villainous type roles, like living. She killed it in Judge Dredd. She was as good as possible in The Purge, and she is just so hateful. They will never kill her on this show, I know, because she's just too awful. In the final round, we're going to be doing Cersei versus Arya is what it's going to come down to. That's what I really think. So Cersei's out here making it really hard for me to stay politically correct and not say bitch. Then we got Sansa out here in a like gothic type effect that I thought was going to insinuate that she maybe had a little more, you know, control. But, uh, no. No. And, you know, a lot of people might say, oh, well, you know, Sansa Stark, she never had any leverage. Okay, Arya was just like, I'm out, bitch. Marjorie is making leverage left and right, even though Khaleesi, who we're going to get to her in just a second, I had to give it to her. She got some leverage. Sorry, honey, but it's a man's world, and if you're going to try to work your shit out, you're going to have to work your shit out. Okay. At some point early in these episodes, it was time for the Comedy Central roast of Mance Raider. We had uh, Melisandre on point as Martha Stewart. Uh, you know, it was sad to see that uh, the wildlings and the people on the wall couldn't work their shit out. But, you know, if they had, that would have been some bullshit. Because they were literally just at each other's throats like two episodes ago. And that would be just too much soap opera. Just too much soap opera for me, personally. Uh, there's a lot of social issues, allegories, going on this season already. First thing we got is we got the Unsullied guy going off to the whorehouse um, and getting a massage, which, you know, I mean, he doesn't have a dick. I still have a wiener. If I went to a whorehouse, that's probably what I would get. Just some, you know, just some nice massage, maybe? Minus the murder. They did slit his throat at the end. And they slit his throat because there's these people where Khaleesi is who support slavery. They want to bring back the slavery. And the slaves, obviously, you don't want that. And Khaleesi doesn't want that. So they go out and they catch one of these pro-slavery people. And they're going to put him on trial, but one of the former slaves goes in there and just just stabs him. Kills him. So then they've got to execute him for doing a murder without a fair trial. You know what? Khaleesi, everyone loves Khaleesi because she couldn't do anything wrong for all of those seasons. And she was just coming out on top every time. I never really... I didn't really like something about that. Something about that didn't feel good to me. You know, Khaleesi to me is kind of like one of those people, one of those liberal people who is constantly telling you all these opinions that you actually agree with, but the fact that they're sitting there like telling you about them like you don't already know makes you feel like you don't like them. So anyway, she's got to execute this former slave and she's up there trying to look confident. She should have at least shed like a few white tears for his ass before they slit his throat. I mean, just a little sympathy. Because now, no one really wants to fuck with her. And people say, oh, it's the right thing to do because he murdered the other guy and it wasn't fair to Okay, murder is never the answer, okay? Uh, even in Game of Thrones, where they murder each other every day, that would not be justice to murder someone. Furthermore, I would like to say, for the record, that they could be keeping those dragons 
in a way... She's got tons of money. Khaleesi could be keeping those dragons in a way nicer enclosure, okay? She's got them in the basement with some chains around their neck, which just seems like overkill. I mean, they're already in the basement. Build them some kind of nice aviary, topiary shit. Doesn't have to be all depressing like that. What the fuck? Khaleesi's cracking, and I could I saw that coming about a couple seasons away. But the most racist award in Game of Thrones goes to uh, Jack and Hagar, the shapeshifter, out here doing blackface, tricking Arya Stark into thinking uh, he's Maya Angelou or something. Right out of the gate of that, I knew something was not right. And then, once she finally does get in with his crew, he makes her, he's got her in dresses. So I'm, you know, I was a fan. I was a Valar Margulis fan. But now I'm having doubts about what the fuck they have going on in there. They're in there doing some kind of nip-tuck Beverly Hills physician type shit on those bodies in there. And it's already got me feeling not great. The very last thing here, which is that we may remember from past seasons, uh, Cersei was hooking up with some beefy young looking trade. Uh, what we didn't know apparently was that she found his ass on Christian Mingle because he is out here doing some Fucked up stuff. There is a new cult out, okay, called the Seven Somethings of the Sparrows or some shit. They're worshipping those seven gods, who I didn't have a fucking problem with before. I liked them better than Melisandre's one true god, because she's a mess. But anyway, we've got this fucked up religious cult going around, murdering the gays out here in, uh... Lannister land, and you know what? I'm not going to say it was homophobic, I'm not going to say it was fucked up, because that just is what it is. You think they were not doing that shit in medieval times? They're doing that shit now. They're doing that shit now in countries. The countries that I can't even name, because I too, we're all too busy hearing about things that Dolce and Gabbana say. We're, we're focused on the things that Dolce and Gabbana say, and they're out there doing gay executions in some countries we don't even know. Because we don't even, you know, want to talk about that. Let me look. Let me just look this the fuck up. Right now. Countries where they execute people for being gay. Here we go. The following countries find homosexuality punishable by death. Mauritania. Sudan. Saudi Arabia. Yemen. Iran. Somalia. The United Arab Emirates. Parts of Nigeria. And parts of Malaysia. Uganda, maybe, will also be soon. Then we've got decapitations in Senegal, and possibly in Gambia. Some stonings in Sudan, Nigeria, Afghanistan. Imprisonment. So, we're out here complaining about what the fuck Dolce and Gabbana are saying about having gay children, and they're fucking murdering people for being gay out in Sudan, or wherever the fuck they're doing it. But we don't want to talk about that. Because that's a little too scary. That's like going to harsh our righteous indignation buzz more than we would like. So let's, let's all spend our time talking about how Dolce & Gabbana don't think gay people should have children when they're out here doing murders in Yemen, Iran. So, and then Marjorie, the fucking, my fucking favorite, one of my favorite characters in the whole show, tries to get her new husband, who she's been fucking the shit out of for this exact purpose, to help her brother, who's now locked up, sees a faggot. They're out here locking up all the faggots, murdering faggots in the streets. And he handles it like a little bitch. Nothing, uh, so nothing comes of it. But I pray to God, I pray to you that for the moment when Marjorie gets to shove a nice stiletto heel through one of those fucking cult members' throats. And we also had, like, an It Gets Better speech from Brienne, who's really swagged up this season, uh, from everything I can tell. I will say the fight sequences on Game of Thrones have gotten progressively more outrageous. I think my favorite fight sequence of all time is the one between Brienne and the Hound, because it was just so, like, 
exhausting. Like, they were just like... But anyway, it's Game of Thrones. It was good. What more do you want? It's gonna be good. Oh, and I forgot one part. Is they finished... Sorry, we got the Roomba going off in here. They finished the whole thing off with a big fight between the Unsullied and the pro-slavery people. Luckily, I don't think they killed Wormtail, because, you know, then the show would go from having 0.2% black characters to, like, 0.1% black characters. It was very epic. Like I was saying, outrageous fight scenes. And, uh... What else? Oh, we didn't even talk about Tyrion. Fuck, this Roomba is popping off. We didn't even talk about Tyrion. He's chilling hard. He got kidnapped by that guy that... Khaleesi didn't even want to mess with anymore. That guy, I used to think he was cool. He was giving Khaleesi some good advice. I don't even know what his name is. That blonde guy, older guy. I thought he was, I thought it was kind of cute. And he was giving Khaleesi good advice. That's what Khaleesi's on top. She always, she's lucking out with the people who give good advice. But anyway, I used to think that guy was cute, was a cool, but now he's just coming off a little needy. A little too desperate. A little too desperate for me. Can, he kidnaps Tyrion. He's like, he's doing some like, Who's that girl who, like, drove in a car and depends to get at her ex-boyfriend or something? That's kind of, like, what he's doing right now. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Some law... Wasn't there some legal situation where some lady drove in a car to her ex-boyfriend's house and she wanted to get there really fast and she wore adult diapers so she could just pee her pants and keep driving? That's, like, something this... that guy would do. 